Hello, my countless followers. Happy weekend. Notice that I'm dressed in a rather informal fashion because it is the weekend. Oh, I love the weekend, especially during a quarantine. There's really nothing like it. Uh, there's a little exception, a little change today. I'm not going to uh, memorize the poem. The poem is sort of long, and I'm, I will memorize it, but honestly, I just got impatient. I wanted to talk about it in a hurry, and I didn't want to wait around and memorize it. I just, uh, you know, I want to I want to talk about it now. <clears throat> this is a poem well, that gives, it's a good example of Emily Dickinson simply not doing bullshit. She just didn't do bullshit. She just would, she just told the truth. And she didn't necessarily have to tell it slant as one of her other poems did either. Here it comes. So this is a uh, poem, starts off, A Bird Came Down the Walk. And I'm, I want you to do do me a favor. While I'm going through this reading, and I know it's pathetic, uh, reading it, when you hear um, a human value or human action or human behavior, uh, do this. Hmm. But she's talking about a bird. So if you hear the human element, just go, and if it sounds like something an animal would do, then you go, yeah, yeah. All right, now I, I can see you. So here's how it sounds when you don't memorize it. <clears throat> a bird came down the walk. He did not know I saw. He bit an angleworm in halves and ate the fellow raw. And then he drank a dew from a convenient grass and then hopped sideways to the fall to let a beetle pass. He glanced with rapid eyes that hurried all around. They looked like frightened beads, I thought. He stirred his velvet head like one in danger. Cautious, I offered him a crumb. And he unrolled his feathers and rode him softer home than oars divide the ocean too silver for a seam. Or butterflies off banks of noon leap plashless as they swim. I hope you count it the parts that were human, personified, anthropomorphized, and the parts was like things birds do. Seems to be about a bird. All right. If you put bird and walk together, that's odd. A bird coming down a walk. A bird doesn't know what a walkway, a sidewalk would be. He's just not flying. Um, he didn't, did not know I saw. There's a human staring at him as if the human is a spy. Um, and... He doesn't, the bird doesn't know that. So he went about his business, which was to bite a worm in half and, and eat it. Raw. Get it? And then he drank a dew from a convenient grass. See what she did there? We would say convenient glass, and it's a convenient grass where the dew is. And then he hopped sideways, sideways to the wall. Uh, you think birds have any sense of courtesy? Like, I sh I'm not going to go past there and... Get that close to the beetle, just let him pass. We should stay six feet apart anyway. Uh, he glanced with rapid eyes. That's what birds would do. They hurried all around, and then he looked like frightened beads. Okay, stirred his velvet head, then a velvet. Then this, like one in danger, cautious. The cautious could be the bird who might be in danger, or the cautious might refer to the next line, which is, I offered him a crumb. Okay, I do that to my, the cardinals in my yard. They're just so beautiful. I want to be close to them. And so I'll throw out some bird seed for them. And what I want them to do is they come closer to me because I just gave them food. I kind of want them to say thank you. I appreciate that because you gave me that food. I'm going to show up more often. You can look at my beautiful red feathers. They don't do that. They wait till I come back inside and I'm safe and they eat the bird that feed by themselves. They're fools. So I offered him a crumb and he unrolled his feathers and rode him softer home that's after he's had the food offered he's like no but look how different it is from his being on a walk and hopping when he leaves he rode like he's on a boat like he's on water he rode him softer home than oars divide the ocean because when the oar goes into the ocean it divides makes a splash um but this doesn't he's too graceful for that and oars divide the ocean to silver for a seam. There is no seam. It's completely smooth. <clears throat> it's like you don't have to come by. It's my cat's coming. <clears throat> to silver for a seam, or butterflies off banks of noon leap plashless as they swim. That would be butterflies. Excuse me. <laughs> that would be butterflies who's touching the water, but so softly. Nothing happened. There's no, it's splashless. It doesn't create a splash. It doesn't disturb the waters. 
So you get that nice contrast between a kind of unnatural meeting, bird is a bird, a human is a human, the bird's motions are awkward, they are not human, the human being is trying to uh, project on him that, doesn't work. But when the bird can become the bird, it's so graceful and so beautiful and so natural that Emily Dickinson, to me, America's greatest poet, cannot put it in ways that you can actually break down. When I when I was a teacher, I had a you know a board behind me, and I, I would try to draw that image. And it's almost impossible to go from a bird flying into an air into the air to someone rowing a boat to a butterfly flying off a bank of the river and then um, leaping plashless as they swim. Right. So uh, that's that's typical Emily. The birds are birds, and we're not birds. So. Um, Next time you watch a Disney movie and uh, the, the birds and the squirrels and the rabbits are helping, uh, say, Snow White uh, take care of her laundry and her, her chores, then it's okay for you to shout out, hey, that's bullshit. Uh, next time you see someone say, oh, I love these buffaloes at Yellowstone, I want to get closer to them. And you know what's going to happen? It's like, but it, they're animals. Your dog is an animal. He'll eat your face if he gets the chance. My beautiful cat's slick there with his tongue hanging out. He's a cat. He's an animal. Not domesticated. He puts up with me. So today is Emma Dickinson's No Bullshit Animal People Day. And that's the kind of thing we talk about on Saturdays. Thank you so much for eating a part of your weekend when you could be doing any number of none other things. And we'll talk again before too long. Bye.